every other interval that you study apart from major intervals and perfect intervals are going to involve a change to the notes of the cheat sheet. Now, we're going to keep our starting notes the same. So we're going to keep the names of the scale in column one unchanged. But now what I'm going to do is give you a few intervals that are not part of the cheat sheet. So let's start with this one. So I have C to E flat. So our reference is going to be up here in C major. So when I look at C to E flat, I'm actually going to do this just momentarily. I'm going to just write that E flat in there. Now I'm going to ask myself if the C to E is a major third, has that flat made the two notes closer together or farther apart? Flats always lower things. So when I lower the, note, uh, the top note of a major interval, then it becomes minor. Oops, I just wrote the wrong thing. Forgive me. Let's fix that real quickly here. Okay, so we're going to call that a major third. Oh, okay. There we go. Major third, or I'm sorry, minor third. There we go. Okay, now let's do a different one. How about if we start on A and go to F? So we're going to, going to refer down here to the A major scale now. So in the scale, the sixth note, by the way, I've already calculated the size. I know it's a sixth. The sixth note is F sharp. We're turning it into F natural. I'll put that in parentheses. Does the natural make it higher or lower? Or maybe you should ask yourself the question, does it make the two notes closer together or farther apart? Remember our interval flow chart. So from left to right, we have the following sequence of intervals. If I move toward the left, as I've done here, the sharp becomes a natural. I've moved left, therefore it's lowered it. I still have a minor sixth. It can't be major because it doesn't appear on the cheat sheet. The same thing happens for perfect intervals, only we don't call them minor. So I'm going to do B and E flat. Okay, so now we're looking at the B major scale. Remember, we always go from the low note. B to E flat. So it started out as natural. We go up to the flow chart. We find out that it went left, therefore it's smaller. So it's a fourth, and we're going to call it a diminished fourth. Now let's do one last interval. I'm going to start from C sharp and go down to F. Now remember, we always use the low note. So when we look at this low note, I'm going to refer to the F major scale. Okay, and I have a C sharp. Now the original note was natural. Referring to my flow chart, here's my natural, and it became a sharp, so we've gone toward the right in the chart. That means it's higher, that has spread the two notes farther apart, and I have an augmented fifth. Now, remember, I keep reminding you that you have to start with the low note of the pair. Now, what if we want to make an interval? What if I'm going to just ask you, instead of naming them, to create them? So I want an augmented fourth up from F. So we're going to go back to the F major scale. So let's find our fourth. It's in the fourth column, of course. It says B flat. Now we need to make these two notes farther apart, and we cannot change the given note. So I need to know what to do to the B flat to make it farther away. That means I've got to raise it. Looking at my flow chart, it becomes a natural. So my answer then is B natural. Now I want to just remind you it's correct whether you write the natural or not. I write it because it helps my thought process. Let's do an augmented sixth from E. Okay, so augmented sixth up from E. Let's go to the E major scale, and I look for the sixth note, which is C sharp. In the flow chart, you see that if I raise a sharp, it becomes a double sharp. Therefore, my answer is C double sharp. Now, to remind you about the, um, the chart that helps us remember all of the sizes and how they are associated with numbers, I call this the perfect side, and I call this the major side. Those are the numbers. So if we're looking at the cheat sheet, 
sorry, you can't see what I'm writing, so let me pull it down here. The titles of the intervals from the major scale or from the cheat sheet are perfect on the 4 and 5 side and major on the 2, 3, 6, 7 side. If they become bigger, they become augmented. And in fact, they can also get bigger still, and we call those doubly augmented. When we make them smaller, diminished is the name we give to the perfect interval, but this side of the column is different. Okay, so this is where the differences start to happen. If I make a perfect interval smaller by a whole step, that means either bringing the top note down a whole step, the bottom note up a whole step, or each of them toward each other by half step, doubly diminished. Over here, we have it diminished and then doubly diminished. So there's more names over here on the side for the seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths. This is a very handy chart because hopefully this will keep you from ever calling a fourth by the wrong name. You cannot have a major fourth or a minor fourth. Conversely, it will keep you from just having something like a perfect third, which doesn't exist, because perfect cannot come over here and become a name attached to the thirds.